I bring you greetings in the matchless name of my Lord God and soon coming Savior, Jesus Christ. Hello, this is the Lord's own humble, holy, and quite happy honey badger, Reverend Bob Lico, bringing you another news and views update for 1119, the year of our Lord, 2022. Let's jump right in today. This will be very short. Let me begin with some good news for a change. I know, I know the majority of these news and views are, well, let's just say it like it is, negative. Well, if you go back to the beginning when I started doing these, you'll note that I would always write and put down the tagline chronicling the collapse of the world. That's why it's generally negative, guys. Our whole world is collapsing in and around us. But here's some good news. Hobby Lobby's devout Christian owner reveals he is giving away his multi-billion dollar firm. And instead of leaving it to his children, which he had considered, he prayed and felt that that large amount of money would destroy them. So instead, when he passes away, and may he live a long life, he's, he's an elderly man now, he is leaving it to the church. And I pray that uh, those who are responsible to be the stewards of his company and his billions of dollars use the money to build up the kingdom of God legitimately. But that's great. The man has been blessed, been a wise businessman, created a very family-friendly, great company, Hobby Lobby, made lots of money, and is doing the right thing with his money. <laughs> Honey Badger, a hat tip to you, sir. I look forward to meeting you up in the halls of heaven one day and shaking your hand, hugging your neck, giving you a kiss. God bless you, sir. We need more people like this. I don't understand why Christian people, why any Christian people, I don't care if you're wealthy or not, but at the time of your departure, have you considered leaving your earthly goods to your local church or Christian community or mission organization that you know is doing legitimate kingdom building work? Not many of us, but here we have this man, a multi-billionaire, leaving his goods to the Lord. That's great. I like to read stories like that. Next article. Church gives food to one millionth person as Americans struggle with inflation. Their simple statement was, it's a blessing to serve. And this is exactly the type of ministry the Lord Jesus has called us, his people, to be involved with. We are to clothe the naked and feed the hungry in the name of our Lord. And it is a needed ministry. And so this church has given away one million meals. That's terrific. Well, here's kind of a, a not good, but good, if you look at it the right way, article. Now, I'm not a soccer fan. But I do understand that FIFA, F-I-F-A, that's the international soccer organization that determines everything that goes on in these big stadiums from the sale of t-shirts and flags and bumper stickers to the type of beverages and food that is served. They control it all. All right. 
Headline reads, World Cup, Nike bans Jesus. African gods from personalized Brazil jerseys. Mohammed still available. This is an article in Breitbart. You can look it up. And they said, and this is a quote from the article, African paganists complained about the references to Jesus. Well, why is this a good thing? Well, it's good because it shows the power in the name of Jesus. It's good because it shows that the enemy trembles at the sound of his name and how the darkness hates the light. And Jesus is indeed the light of the world. So, yeah, it's bad they ban our freedom to use the, the name of our Lord. But on the other hand, it just shows the power that is in his name. The name of the Lord is what? A strong tower. And the righteous run into him, thereby are saved. Well, there are just a few little good news articles in the midst of all of the decay and the decline and brokenness and tragedy and horrors around us. Well, I'm sorry, we've got to move from the good back into the negative aspects of living in a world that does not acknowledge the true and living God. Well, here is my weekly tranny time update. You may remember tool time on television. Well, this is tranny time. First article, young people who detransition describe death threats, doxing, intimidation, and being accused of genocide from the cult-like transgender community they turn their backs on. Now, these are the victims of transsexual mutilation. As I've already covered, and you can read the articles, they just go back two or three weekly updates. I cover this every week, it seems. Uh, we have learned that over half of the young people that are mutilated consider suicide. Have mental problems, substance abuse problems, and generally are ignored and shunned by society. Well, those who turn their back on that horrible mutilation and deception and say, whoa, wait a second, we made a huge mistake, shouldn't have done this, uh, and try to expose and shine some light upon the great darkness in this cult-like death community called transgenderism. They get hit with intimidation, doxing, death threats, and for some reason are accused of genocide. Well, by the time any transsexual has undergone their treatment fully, they're incapable of reproduction. So I don't see how, I mean, the very act of having your penis removed or your womb removed that is an act of genocide and you know as far as i'm concerned it's really not a good use of not a good definition of the term but when you're dealing with people that hate themselves and their bodies so much uh, you can't expect them to use the king's english uh, correctly next article lgbtq plus Diversity Sex Education for Toddlers, starting at age three, has been branded extreme and unbalanced in Wales. Well, the courts now are thinking this over, so please, Christian listener, pray that the court in Wales will do the right thing and say, yeah, this curriculum that you're trying, that's really nothing more than grooming, that you're trying to weld into our educational system over here uh, is indeed extreme and unbalanced. Three-year-old children don't need to know anything about sexuality. 
I move on. It gets worse. San Francisco launches guaranteed income program for trans community. I quote, by giving low income trans people the resources to cover expenses they deem most immediate and important, given each person's unique situation, we are implementing a truly community centered intervention to combat poverty, said Aria Saeed, president of the Transgender District in San Francisco. Now, this is a pilot program, so I don't want all of my listeners to begin to run to San Francisco and uh, declare themselves to be a transgender desiring person. So they too can receive $1,200 a month. Well, if you read the article, just go online and just talk about the guaranteed income for transsexuals in San Francisco. It'll pop up. Lots of articles. Well, it's a small pilot program limited to around 60 people, as I remember. And you fill out the, the you know questionnaire and there's over 50 gender and sexual uh, perversions that you can declare yourself a part of. Uh, and try to win this lottery of getting being one of the lucky trannies who gets $1,200 a month to cover expenses that they deem immediate and important. In other words, going to the club, buying weed and mushrooms and uh, locker room inhalants and whatever else, condoms, I guess, and fleet enemas uh, that are so needed by the uh, sodomites and transgender community perhaps new wigs or more makeup and uh, nail polish. Well, that stuff's very expensive. And of course, it's up to the community, the state of California, to guarantee these poor perverts $1,200 a month. Now notice this is not $1,200 a month guaranteed income for say, retired teachers who are on hard times, who have fallen on hard times or whatever. I mean, what about all of the hard working men and women that went in the military, got out of the military with PTSD and now stand on the street corners of every city in America asking for money, food, a place to live, clothing, how about $1,200 a month for these men and women who got broken and damaged defending our freedom? Oh, no. No, no, no. San Francisco launches guaranteed income program for trans community. Indeed, brothers and sisters, the world loves its own. Now, this is, a, this is I got to make this statement in bold, a t-shirt uh, for someone. And I quote, having a vagina doesn't make me less of a man. <laughs> Can you believe it? This is an actual statement, a quote. Having a vagina doesn't make me less of a man. I'll just let that hang out there in space and continue the headline. Transgender man reveals he, then I put in she, put his, <clears throat> her, pap smear test off for a year for fear he'd, she'd, be turned away because of his, her, bound chest, don't want those boobies hanging out, and hairy legs. Well, the article did go on to say they finally got the, the courage and went and got their pap smear, which came back clear, which I guess means they don't have cervical cancer. I have never met a man. And I would say the man has not ever been born from the very beginning of men to this day as I speak that have ever gotten cervical cancer. Oh, they get testicular cancer. 
different types of of uh, cancers that can affect the genitals for men as well, but we don't have a cervix. Transgender man reveals he put his pap smear off for a year. How many men get pap smears? Zero. Absolutely zero. Can anyone besides me see the madness and the abysmal deception this person and the whole sodomite community death cult is in? Having a vagina doesn't make me less of a man. And of course, what is a news and views update without magic mushrooms? Now, I covered this last week, but I throw it in this week just as a reminder. National Institutes of Health to trial whether magic mushrooms can help smokers quit in first federal study of psychedelics in 50 years. The answer will be yes, they can. It's just interesting that the federal government is now doing this. Now, this is, I am going to do, I've been threatening this for about six months, and now I'm getting enough of the articles just to go ahead and do an entire hour, maybe two, maybe three hours on the spiritual other world aspect that is behind all psychedelic drug use. Next article, gruesome end. Ancient mummified child was drugged with psychedelics before ritual sacrifice to the gods, scientists reveal. Oh yeah, just go and Google this. You will find that psychedelics were used and have been used from the beginning of the fall of man. And they have always been used to make connection with the fallen Elohim and demons. And they have always been used ritualistically in connecting and contacting these gods. And we have the ancient mummified remains of a child who was murdered on an altar to a pagan god but beforehand was given psychedelics. Since you're going to kill the child anyway, why give them psychedelics? I, I don't understand why they needed that child to be in that state since it's the sacrificial victim. But nonetheless, they did. And, and the reason I include this article is very simply to point out that these drugs are very ancient they have always been connected with ritual use and abuse and murder. The next article is one such drug, Ayahuasca. The psychedelic brew blamed for Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers' poor performances causes mental health problems that last months in majority of users. Landmark study finds this is from the Daily Mail. Now, if you've been following any of my broadcasts, and I've got other presentations on the Honey Badger Bob YouTube channel dealing specifically with psychedelic drugs, then you would know that Ayahuasca is basically a DMT brew comes from a couple of plants that they have been using in the Amazon and the Peru and back, back there down in South America for a long time. The shamans have always you know, traced their roots back to, to the use of this drug there. It goes way back, bottom line. It was not popular amongst people. It was, it's a serious drug. You vomit, you have uncontrollable vomiting, diarrhea, physical pains in your body. It's not a pleasant, hippy-dippy, trippy, you know, put a, uh, a piece of blotter acid on your tongue and, and go sit back with your headphones on and have a great time. No, this is a very intense body 
type experience from everything I've read. I have never drunk ayahuasca and I never will. I have done DMT. There are a lot of other ways to do DMT besides drinking it. But the interesting thing here is that it does cause mental health problems that last four months in the majority of the users. Now, the shamans, on the other hand, will say, oh, no, it's just all part of the process. All of this physical stuff people go through, it's, it's part of the journey. Actually, no, it's your body trying to get rid of poison, vomiting and uncontrollable diarrhea, all of these sort of things are the body's reaction to rid itself of something that is harming, possibly killing it. It's not part of the drug experience and the learning. You know, you're just being emptied out and hollowed out by, by this purging, and it's just such a, a thing to be embraced. No, it's your body reacting to being poisoned, quite frankly. Uh, so it causes mental health problems that last for months in the majority of users. Well, you see this landmark study, I question a little bit because we, had, we haven't been researching ayahuasca formally at all. To my knowledge, it's been 50 years and now NIH is just looking into magic mushrooms, which are well-documented and well-known. Ayahuasca, not so much. So I don't know about their landmark study. It was, you know, that's just based on the anecdotal comments of people, subjective anecdotal comments of people who've taken the drug. But what they do find is that they have mental health problems that last for a month that dog these people. It's not like a, oh yeah, I took that on uh, Friday and here it is Monday. I'm ready to go back to work. No problems. Everything's just normal. Just kind of took a few hours off there, so to speak. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll get into it when I deal with it. But mental health problem lasts for months in the majority of users. I could tell you this, that they also know that over half of the people that take DMT or, or consume magic mushrooms, psilocybin mushrooms, have terrifying and horrific experiences. Little over half the people that is not being played up in the media. The media is playing up just how helpful and healthy and life enhancing these drugs are, such as the next article. Girls trip, why some black women are using psychedelic mushrooms for healing from Essence Magazine. Well, again, we're talking healing and how these are really healing healing drugs and medicines well why is it that the, over half of the users are having mental health problems that last for months if it's such a healing thing next article a church in new hampshire offering a hallucinogenic tea ayahuasca has gained a following. Oh, I bet it has. But the pastor says his time in town is running out. Well, if you go and, and look up the article, you'll find out that this guy got in there. He's not a real pastor. He's not a seminary trained minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, or even just a God called servant of Christ. They use that term, and he calls his gathering a church for legal reasons. And he found a loophole that allowed him to serve people hallucinogens. But obviously, the town fathers and the council and people in the town that do not believe in sorcery are against this, and he's realizing that his time is probably running out. They're going to close that door. But there is a church, and there are several just look up churches and psychedelics, and you're going to find a handful of these places popping up around America. And they're trying to use religious freedom and liberty, and they will cite the Native American church, which is, since I believe the late 40s, early 50s, allowed Native Americans to use peyote in one of their rituals. They're trying to use that as a loophole, perhaps, to get the, the nose of the camel in the tent, so to speak.
Well, last article on the magic mushrooms. The dark side of ayahuasca. Go to BanyanTreatmentCenter.com. Although they, they certainly support the use of psychedelics, but it's interesting when you read down through there, they are at least honest enough to list the long-term negative effects that people can have from taking ayahuasca. And it deals with anxiety, sleeplessness. It's just, they listed a whole, I don't know, maybe 10 things. And this can last for months. Is that really worth it? I've never had an encounter with my Lord that was negative. Oh, it may have impacted my flesh or hurt my feelings personally because I was wrong or something. But it has never <laughs> led to mental health problems that lasted for months in the majority of users. Wow. So yeah, please do read the dark side of ayahuasca. And there are many, many negative reports coming out. Remember people, this is something that shamans alone used to use. And occasionally they would allow another person that they would train up to be the replacement shaman when they died. Now they've realized that this can bring in money, which they desperately need in these little Amazonian communities that have nothing. Oh, rich Westerners will fly out here. And the shamans are like, all right, take it at your own risk. And people are flying down there and coming back with lots of problems. Oh, yeah, you hear the Joe Rogans and you'll hear other people talk about the positive experiences they've had. And around half the people do have positive experiences. Very few will tell you about the dark side. Well, I will in the future. And the reports are coming out. And oh, believe me, they're going to begin to come out. These things were not meant to be toyed with. Moving on. The cult of Roman Catholicism update. And I could have gone on. I'm just keeping this to one page. And I want to be done in the next three minutes. First article. Massive. <laughs> massive unmarked burial site from a former, and I had to put in Roman, because just said Catholic Native American. No, let's name the child. Site of a former Roman Catholic Native American boarding school discovered in South Dakota gets excavated using ground penetrating radar. Read the article in the Daily Mail. In fact, the FBI are involved. They don't know how many bodies they're going to find. Another article you can read in the WashingtonPost.com. Thousands of Canada's indigenous children died in church-run boarding schools. Where are they buried? Oh, yeah. It's a horrible, horrible expose that's currently ongoing in Canada, all surrounding the cult of Roman Catholicism and their boarding schools, which turned out to be nothing more than slave labor camps, places where children were regularly raped and sent out to rich donors' homes to be raped. They were places of pedophilia and just horrible abuse, ill treatment. They didn't feed the kids right. They barely clothed them, worked them to death, beat them to death, tortured them, raped them, and then buried them in unmarked graves. Well, there's nothing hidden that will not be revealed. Next article. The horrors of St. Anne's. Ontario provincial police files obtained by CBC News reveal the history of abuse at the notorious residential school that built its own electric chair. 
watch that documentary and weep. And this was done in the name of our Lord Jesus. Next headline, oldest Catholic boarding school in Australia at center of child sex claims. Another article on the same topic, child sexual abuse in Catholic church in Australia. And it wasn't just at the oldest boarding school, it's endemic, it's in all of them. We got South Dakota, we got Canada, we got Australia. Next one, report identifies abuses of Native American children in United States boarding schools, some run by Roman Catholics. Oh yeah, most of them. Last but not least, Maryland Probe finds 158 abusive priests and over 600 victims. Any place that the cult of Rome has planted its flag solidly in the ground and either built cathedrals and then these nice religious schools, all of them have very dark histories as we well know and has been well documented by many many people not just the honey badger but movies and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars have been paid out by the cult of rome to the men and women who were molested and sodomized as children by priests and nuns in this cult Lord have mercy upon Rome. I have very little mercy for them. I pray for the people that are entrapped. And some parish priests are probably good men that love Jesus and are honest. But look at this, guys. Seven articles just this week documenting the tragedy that occurs on a regular basis in this cult. Well, have a happy Saturday. I'm looking forward to tomorrow so much. I can't wait to go to church and worship the Lord and be with his people and get a breath of fresh air for the week to come. Amen and amen. Thank you for listening.